Let me ask you a quick question. Have you ever heard this album? Chances are, if you're any sort of blues or pop guitar player, the answer is yes. And there's a reason why. See, amongst the blues guitar world, pretty much everyone knows this album as like just this absolute masterpiece where they probably started to love guitar. Same way it was for me. Loving Continuum as a guitar player is kind of like loving The Dark Knight as a movie fan. If you say you don't like it, you're probably just trying to be different and not like the other girls. But I wanted to know why everyone likes it. Like, what's the reason? So let's dive into it. Continuum was dropped about 16 years ago on September 11th, 2006. But the first single, you might know what it is. Now from the get-go, one of the things that I could really tell about this album is that the message is always conveyed in the underlying harmony and they always support each other. What does that mean? Let's talk about it. The message of the song is kind of like this uplifting call to action. It's really cool because it mimics the chord progression of another very popular song called People Get Ready. It's an old soul song. Same chords. You got the one, you got the six, you got the four, and you got back to the one. But that can get a little bit repetitive and a little bit boring. What do people look up all the time on YouTube? How to spice up your chord progressions. And the first thing I would think to do is to just make every chord like a ninth chord or a crazy seventh chord or a diminished chord so we'd be all like, Oh, waiting, waiting, waiting on the world to change. And that can sound cool if you use it sparsely, but a lot of times spicing up your chord progressions doesn't actually take a lot. See, what Mayer does is we have this circular thing that we talk about, this one, six, four, one. And what he does the second time around is he just starts on the five, adds that A, it's like a brand new chord progression. You don't have to add that much. And I'm not arguing against adding, adding seventh chords into your, into your songs or adding ninth chords or adding diminished. I'm just saying spicing up your chord progressions doesn't have to be a hard thing. If you use these little minor changes, you've got a brand new song. So now let's move on to the second song. And while the first song was a real major like call to action for people in our world, the second one is more personal. So he shifts to the minor key. It's no longer about like, ooh, what's wrong with the world? It's more like, what's wrong with the thing I'm doing in this relationship right now? And how can I convey that really sincerely? So we go to the minor key, specifically the key of A minor. We go one, three, six. That's basically the whole song, except for a couple parts. And you're like, Mike, I thought you told me repetitive chord progressions wouldn't work. Sometimes we break rules, sometimes we make them. That's not always the case. When we have a repetitive chord progression like this, and we don't want to change any of the chords for vocal reasons or whatever, that's when we get into dynamics. Dynamics are just as important as the chords themselves. And the way he makes this not seem repetitive isn't even necessarily in the guitar playing. This is where as a guitar player, it's good and it's really important to understand the other instruments in the arrangement, especially the vocalist you're playing behind. John Mayer, in the chorus of this song, goes to the falsetto. Even though he's playing those chords over and over again, You can always tell where the hook is and you can always tell where the big moment is and that's super important. We've reached our third song on the album. The first two were bangers. This one is also one of my favorite John Mayer songs of all time, kind of because it's an anti waiting on the world to change. Waiting on the world to change was kind of like this uplifting like, hey, let's go get them. And this is kind of the darker side of that call to action. And like we said before, waiting on the world to change was the major. Belief, the exact opposite. And 
if we were to take that big riff and actually analyze the harmony, break it down, which as a guitar player is what you should do with any riff you learn. We've got our D minor. We've got our G minor. We've got our C. And we got back to our D. A lot of the songs have really circular chord progressions, but he makes them stick out because of dynamics and small little changes. This song specifically is a 1476 minor, and this song is angry, which is why he switches to the minor key. One of the cool songwriting things we can learn from this is a lot of the time when you're writing pop music, you're taught to get to the chorus immediately. I think the rule of thumb among like songwriters and you go from every YouTube channels, you wanna to get to your chorus within 30 to 50 seconds. That is how you become Max Martin. He doesn't really do that in any way, shape, or form in this song. In this song, we have verse, pre-chorus, verse, pre-chorus, bridge, solo, and then we get to the chorus. Why would anyone even keep listening to this song? Well, one, because it's deep and John Mayer is a freaking genius. And two, we have to look at the facts about it. John Mayer sort of teases you and gives you a, a really memorable pre-chorus where he switches up the chord progression and we go to this G minor first instead of going to the G minor after the D minor. Not only that, but we get that really memorable line that he starts with every time. He starts with the, oh, everyone believes. And even though there isn't a chorus yet, there are hooks all throughout the song. There are guitar hooks, there are vocal hooks. So even if you're not getting that chorus within 30 to 50 seconds, find out what your hooks are. Now it's time, friends, it's time. Let's talk about gravity. Everyone knows about gravity, everyone loves gravity, and the thing about gravity is, it's the first song on the album that's in 6-8. And it's got your classic chord progression. Most of the time it's just a 1-4. And then sometimes he goes down to the five. And if you know anything about blues guitar, there's one progression that we all love. It's the one, four, five. Now what Mayer does is he puts that in a way more soulful context, adds that absolutely beautiful intro lit. Now I could go on for a million years about every single lick and line in that song, but as always, let's focus on the underlying harmony. It would have been easy for him to just stick to the one, four, five. See, what he does is he goes back and forth between the one and the four. And a popular technique among songwriters and guitar players is if you want to lead into the five, you take the fifth of that chord and you play that first. Usually it would be in a seventh context playing an A7, but he goes to the minor, which is the chord that's technically in the key of G. So we go from that one to the four, to the two, which leads right into the five. And even that would be super cool, because we could go to a two, five, one. Then he hits you with that E flat out of nowhere. Great songwriting tool right here. Let's say you have a chord progression in the key of G major, and you have these seven notes. You can actually take one of the chords from the G minor scale, starting on the same note, say as E flat. Even though E flat's not in that key, you can take the E flat out of the G minor scale, throw it into your G major chord progression, even just once, and it'll make your listener go, ooh, ooh, who put the gravy on? Who put that sauce on? Not only are the chords in that song special, but let's talk about the solo real quick. Here's what every blues player wants to do. Mike, are you anti-shredding? No, I'm not anti-shredding. I wish I could shred like Polyphia. I'm talking about the fact that we all wanna use six strings at a time, and a really cool technique if you wanna create the most melodic lead lines, try using just one string. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Mike tries to be serious 
for more than 30 seconds. If you guys like it, let me know and I'll make a part two and finish breaking down the album. Wanted to see what a different style of content would be and if anyone would be into that. Also, if you like it, make sure to comment what other artists or albums you'd want me to cover. Make sure to smash the subscribe button. All the info about this gear is linked in the description. And most important of all, have a fantastic day.